Welcome back to the Spoonie Stitcher channel. I'm Shannon the Spoonie Stitcher. You're inside the stitchery and I'm so happy you're here today. You're here for a tutorial, a bonus tutorial. You knew about this if you watched yesterday's video and if you didn't, well then you stumbled across this video and I'm still happy you're here. <laughs> but if you watched all the way to the end of yesterday's video, you knew that this was coming and if you didn't, you didn't have a heads up. I like to sprinkle little things in my videos here and there. So a few videos ago, I made something and I asked you guys um, if you'd want a tutorial and I did not expect the response. Overwhelmingly, yes. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. Today we're going to make Boop. This is Boop. Boop is my little bat creation. He is so easy and quick to make. He is perfect for a child's little Halloween bucket or just to put on your shelf and look adorable, <laughs> make into a keychain. He's perfect. He's adorable and I love him. So get your materials ready, listed down below in the description box, everything you'll need. And let's make little Boop together. First, we're gonna make Boop's ears. Make a magic ring, pinch with your thumb, wrap around to make an X like so, hold with your other finger, turn, turn your hook upside down, go under the first loop, grab the second, bring it through, twist it, and you've got your magic loop. If you don't know how to make one, or if I went too fast, my beginner's playlist is linked down below. First, you're gonna make a single crochet into the ring, then a half double crochet, chain one, half double again, single crochet, and you're done. <laughs> Close the ring, fasten off, leave a tail for sewing, chain one to secure and pull through. These are his ears. All you're gonna do is fold them in half. Now I like to get them ready to sew them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the piece that closed the ring, the short tail, and I'm gonna come back through the edge of this side like that. Just like that, so that there's a piece on each side so I can bring them together and sew it. Make two. Now you have two ears. Next, let's make the wings. To make the wings, we're going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're going to work into the back bumps. Normally people work into a chain on the side like this, but we are going to flip our piece over. See these little bumps? That's what we're gonna work into. We're gonna skip the first one because it's impossible to get your hook in there. So we're gonna slip stitch in the first, well, second bump. Then we're going to single crochet in the next one. Half double in the next one. We're going to double crochet in the last three. One, two, and three. The last one can be a little tricky. Just, you know, kind of force your head into there. Okay. Okay, so that was the first row. Now we're gonna chain two, one, two, and we're gonna turn. In this stitch right here in the second chain, right there, we're gonna slip stitch. And then the stitch right below it, right here, the actual stitch, these are chains, These, this is a stitch, we're gonna make a single crochet. Now we're gonna chain two, one, two. Now, in the back bump of that chain, right there, I don't know, can you see it? Hold on, right here. So if I turn it, you can see this is the chain, this is the bump, okay? we are going to slip stitch into that. And then single crochet in the stitch below, right there. We're gonna do this two more times. One, 
two, find the back bump of the second chain right here, slip stitch into it, single crochet in the stitch below. One more time, chain two, slip stitch into the second chain, single crochet in the stitch below. So you should have like four little frills. <laughs> One, two, three, four. The last two stitches, you will slip stitch into both of them. They are right here. Can you see? Okay. Gonna slip stitch into this one, both loops. I know it can be a little tricky. And this last one can really fight you. So just push your hook in really hard. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> Fast enough with a decent sized tail, you will use this to sew to your bat. So I'm gonna cut it like right here. So that's, you know, that's how long mine is. Chain one and then pull your hook out. Then kind of pull that tight. Now, make two of them. And once you do, we're going to prep them to sew onto our bat. I like prepping my pieces. I know lots of tutorials, they don't do this. Um, they show you how to do it later. I like to prep my pieces, so all I have to do when I assemble my bat is just sew and go. So we have two little tails here. The one on the end that's uh, close to the longest side, so this is your short side, this is your long side, the short little tail. We are just gonna sew that into the wing so that we don't have to look at it. You can, if you want to be kind of cute, you know how bats have those little like claws on the end of their, of their wings? You could go back and forth a few times in the same stitch on the end here. If my needle will go in, there we go. Just a few times, just around and around. I don't know how many, I'm not counting. I have said it before and I will say it again, I am not a professional. <laughs> Just gonna go a few times and make a little ball like thing or maybe it'll look like claws I don't know so you could you know give him like a little paw if you want to um, but I'm just gonna put my tail inside the wing just gonna kind of go in and out just so it doesn't show later because I don't want it to show. You might have to like pull on your wing a little bit. And then I'm just gonna fasten off. So I will probably have this wing this way so that where I cut off will be in the back just in case it would show. So that will probably be his left wing. <laughs> this would be his left wing. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing. So, because the other one is facing the other way, I am going to make sure my tail is hidden on the other side. I'm just going to go in and out. Back the other way. Okay. So, I have my wings prepped, my ears prepped. Let's make the body. Round one, we're gonna make a magic ring again. We're gonna make six single crochet into this magic ring. Pretty standard for amigurumi. One, two, three, four, five, and six. You want to double check to make sure you've got six. So these little V's are each stitches. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. The loop on the end of your hook is not a stitch. Pull your tiny tail to close the hole, but not all the way. Make sure you still have a hole there. Insert your hook into the sixth stitch which is one, two, three, four, five, six, right here. Make two single crochet in that stitch. That's called an increase. 
when you have two stitches in the same stitch, that's an increase. Mark the first stitch, so you got one, two, and now pull the short tail tight. Why do I do that? Because if I pull it tight all the way before I start my second row, I may not get my hook into the stitch. <laughs> that is something I learned the hard way. <laughs> now, this is round two. We just made two stitches. We need 12, which means we are going to increase in every stitch. So we've got three and four, five, and six, seven, and eight, nine, ten, one more, eleven, twelve. Okay, we're already on to round three. We're going to increase in the first stitch. So we're going to take our stitch marker out. Our stitch is right there. We're going to make two single crochet into it. So that's our increase. We're going to mark the first stitch. One, two. We're going to make one single crochet in the next stitch. And we're going to repeat that all the way around. That is our pattern. Two, one, two, one. So we increase. And then we make one single crochet by itself. Increase. One single crochet by itself. Increase. And your last stitch should be a single crochet all by itself. Make sure and check you've got 18 stitches. Oh, see how my hole opened up? No big deal. I'm gonna fix that now. I'm going to pull this tight, as tight as I can without breaking the yarn. Yes, you can absolutely break the yarn. I've done it. <laughs> and I am going to sew my tail closed. Sew my hole closed, not my tail. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> and I am just going to make a knot. Honestly, not the best way to close the hole, but uh, it's the fastest. <laughs> if you're giving this to a child though, um, first of all, don't use safety eyes. And second of all, make sure everything is sewn on really well. Rounds four through eight, we are just gonna make 18 single crochet all the way around. So I'm going to take out my stitch marker and I'm going to make the next two stitches of the round. Here's my trick. I like to put my stitch marker on the side of the stitch, not the top. We've been putting it on the top. I like to put it on the side. So one, two, right here. Why do I do that? Because it reminds me that I'm going around and around. When it's on the top, it's telling me that I either increase or decrease in case I forget. If it's on the side, I know I'm working in continuous rounds. Just a fun little crochet hack. So we are going to go around and around for rounds four through eight. I will meet you right before round nine. Okay, we have one stitch left for round eight. There we go. Make sure you have 18 all the way around. And I am going to pause, get my other stitch marker. This is why I say to have two and clip my yarn like this. So that if anything happens while I'm adding details, that's as far as it'll go. Okay, we're gonna add the face. So here is your stitch marker that it was marking your rows. Oh, this is the other way that I like to do that. So look, it makes like a line. Isn't that cool? You can follow the line up. So here's round four, five, six, seven, and eight. Let's give him a face. So on the opposite side of your stitch marker, you will flip it like so. Get your safety eyes or your false French knot ready. If you need the false French knot tutorial, it's linked down below. Here is our magic ring. Here is round two, three, and four. 
between three and four is where your eyes go. So, one, two, three, four. Between three and four, about three stitches apart. So I like to kind of like flatten it just to see where I should put my eyes. One, two, three, four. I lost my place, there we go. Okay, let's see, maybe here. And one, two, three. What do we think of that? Too close, too far? Mm, let's take a look at boop. No, no, I think it's good. Okay, so I'm gonna put on my backs. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of extra to his eyes just to make him look a little bit more special. Adding a little bit of white under their eyes just makes the safety eye pop a little bit more. So I have a little bit of white here and I'm gonna go to the side. Now this is a little tricky because you have to get around the safety eye backing. And under the stitch, like that. Now we want it to kind of go on the side of his eyes. So I'm gonna go down here over about one stitch. Like this. See, just a little, a little glint. Do the same thing on the opposite eye. So now I'm gonna start the underside first. And then I'll go up, like right here. Try to make sure it's as even as possible. See? <laughs> now let's add his ears, which we've already prepped, so this will be easy. Here's his head, and we need our tapestry needle. We're going to fold his ear in half like this so it sits on his head like so. And this goes on either side of your magic ring. So my magic ring is right here. So one will go here and one will go here. Uh, this ear turned out a little wonky so I'm going to fix it on the second ear and I'll show you how. So here's my ear. It goes on opposite sides of the magic ring. Your magic ring is right there. You can still see my hole here. So I'm gonna stick it right there. And I'm gonna go through the same hole I just went in with the other one. Normally you wouldn't do this, but I'm going to this time. Because I want that little ear to close. I want it to look like that. So the longer of the two strands that you have, uh, this one in my case, is gonna come back out the ear, back out the head, <laughs> sorry, through the ear. So we're gonna go up, not the same stitch you came out of, otherwise it'll just come apart, and then go through the ear like this because you want to grab that back end. Pull, go back down into the head, pull tight, position it, flip it inside out, and tie them together. Flip it back, And there you go. Now let's add the nose. Grab a little pink scrap of yarn and your tapestry needle. You're just gonna go down, 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 down. I'll show you. But you wanna start it at the edge 
of the bottom of the eyes. So it's the same level. Okay, so apparently I stink at explaining this because I've tried it three times now. But anyway, you go over and down and hopefully you can just see what I'm doing. So I went over about two stitches down do the exact same thing you just did. So I'm gonna go back up. Pick good tools, people. This needle really is awful. Go back up through the other side. Wow, this needle is really bad, okay. Anyway. It's just a funny little heart. And then I went up through the bottom, kind of scooped up my stitches like this. And then back down. There we go. Okay. Round nine. Starts with a decrease. So I like to use the invisible decrease, which is I scoop under the first front loop and the second front loop. And then I pull through two and pull through two. I'm gonna mark that one. Remember I'm increasing and decreasing. So now I mark on the top and I can get rid of this Okay, next stitch is a single crochet. And that is our pattern. We're going to decrease. And single crochet. Decrease. And single crochet. Round 10, we are going to make 12 single crochet all the way around. So we're just gonna stitch all the way around. So one, two, three, four, five, 12. This is a good time to stop and stuff. You shouldn't need much. I'm just going to use some yarn scraps. Now then, you are going to fold this in half. So try to get your stuffing out of the way. Fold it in half like this. We're gonna crochet through both sides. So our first stitch is right there. It's this side and this side, and we're gonna make a half double crochet right here. The next one is a single crochet. Two slip stitches right here and here single crochet in the next running out of them <laughs> but we still have one more and that is a half double crochet and then i like to kind of see this little stitch just sticking out on the side I'm gonna just slip stitch into that just to kind of like fasten down my foot, basically. Now we're gonna fasten off. Okay. Kind of sew in your yarn here. Just hide it. 
going to go back in to secure my foot. And then I'm just going to hide it in the back somewhere. Okay, now our wings, which we prepped. So this should be very easy. Take whichever wing you want and count down three stitches under your ear. Three stitches, three rows. <laughs> One, two, three. This is where the top of your wing will go. Like this. So what I like to do is the good side, I like to hold against the little bat like this, like he's hugging himself. I'm gonna get a pin, stick it in there, just to hold it in place. Get my yarn needle. And I am going to grab just a few stitches on the side, very surface level. Grab the edge of my wing and go in like that. And I'm gonna do that along the side just a couple times. And one more for good measure. Not too much because you're running out of, you know, a place you can actually stitch. Because remember, the side of our wing only has two stitches right here. So, and then I'm gonna go back into the body. And I'm not gonna do anything with it because I'm gonna wait till I attach the other wing. There. Remove the pin and there's your wing. Let's do it again. Just gonna pin it in there, give himself a little hug, or I guess maybe he's bowing to us. I guess that kind of looks like he's bowing. Okay. Um, just gonna grab the edge of his wing. Okay, and back through the body somewhere next to this one. Take the pin out. There he is, now flip him over. Get these two strings in the same stitch. So I'm gonna move this one under and over to this stitch right here. So they're coming out of the same stitch. Tie a knot or two. Take your tails. Go out somewhere through the back. Anywhere, it really doesn't matter. Fasten off by creating tension so that these tails will get sucked back into the body. And now you have your very own little boop. Who should be able to, yep, wrap his rings around and hang upside down. So yes, these are his little feet. <laughs> Congratulations, you now have your own little boop. And they all look a little bit different. Uh, this yarn was thinner, so I couldn't wrap it as, uh, I probably needed to wrap it a few more times, as you can see. This one has thicker nose, um, but I can fix that. There we go, see? I just wrapped it a few more times, very easy. So thank you for making boop with me and I wanna see your bats. So if you want to post in our private Facebook group or you wanna tag me on Instagram, don't forget to use the hashtag boop the bat. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you liked making your very own little boop. And if you did and you have social media, please use boop the bat hashtag and tag me in any post where you post a picture of him. I would love to see your boops, see what colors you chose, see if you added any accessories. I almost gave him a bow tie. I did, but I decided he was a casual bat. So thank you so much for joining me today. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the Yarn Zebra family. I would love to see you again. And remember, life happens. 
yarn helps, and Spoonies can stitch it up too. Bye!